Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how primary timings, especially on DDR5, really don't matter very much. Now, already on DDR4, I've, I've complained that people pay entirely too much attention to the cast latency timing, which really is there more to look pretty than to actually do anything to your memory performance, but... You know, apparently that message didn't didn't make it through, like most of the things I say on my channel. Um, but anyway, so here we have a DDR5 setup running 28, 37, 37, 28, one T command rate. Like these primary timings are as tight as it gets for DDR5 right now um, at 6,400 megabits per second. Like this, this isn't getting any lower uh, without like resorting to liquid nitrogen on the memory sticks. So for air cooling, this is as good as it gets. Um, and the only thing I've not done is I've not touched any of the sub-timings. All of the sub-timings are on auto. Um, and yeah, we're gonna run some, uh, latency, like, just memory performance tests, and mostly memory latency tests. So we're gonna run IDA, and we're gonna run, uh, PyPrime. Uh, PyPrime is a, uh, single-core CPU benchmark that is so incredibly memory latency sensitive that even right now, the world record in it is held by DDR4. It is one of the very few benchmarks out there where DDR4 beats DDR5. Um, yeah, everything else at this point has been, at least on hardware bot, every benchmark on hardware bot at this point has been taken by DDR5 except PyPrime, because PyPrime loves memory latency and DDR4 just can't beat, uh, I mean, DDR5 can't beat a DDR4 kit doing 4400 CL12. Um, so, of course, we aren't in safe mode, so we're going to have to rerun the latency test in IDA because it's horribly inconsistent. We are supposed to be seeing, like, 56.7 nanoseconds, um, right, with these settings right now, which is not bad by DDR5 standards. Okay, we got a 57.9. Um, you know, and our read test is, uh, just under 100 gigabytes per second. Our write test is at 89 gigabytes per second. Our copy test is 90 gigabytes per second. Um, not great. As far as I'm concerned, in terms of performance, the, the latency test is not being very cooperative right now. It is supposed to be able to go under 57 nanoseconds with these settings right now. Um, come on, give me... Okay, well... The, you might be wondering, like, Buildzoid, why don't you just take a screenshot of the settings? And the thing about screenshots is, like, people can edit them. Though I guess if I actually edited my videos, I could just edit the footage, right? And then punch in whatever latency numbers I want, um, which is one of the reasons, like, I, that's partially one of the reasons that I like to do my videos where, like, I run the benchmarks on video instead of ahead of time, because, yeah, also this was evidently a bad decision, because it's just not going to spit out the correct result for the next, like, five attempts or something, stupid benchmark, I mean, we could just call it 58 nanoseconds, that's really not that different from 57, so we'll just call that 58 nanoseconds, which, like, it just makes it easier for the second set of time, like, the CL40 setup to beat this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get better memory latency at CL40 at the same memory speed, because primary timings don't matter. Anyway, next up we're going to run uh, PyPrime, and I keep clicking the wrong Benchmate icon. Um... And uh, Pi Prime is going to be very one-sided. It, it's also going to favor the, the CL40 setup. Um, in fact, everything favors the CL40 setup because primary timings just don't matter. Like, they, well, okay, that's not true. They matter a little bit, but they don't matter anywhere near as much as most people think they do. So anyway, we get nine, nine seconds, uh, 862 milliseconds, uh, which is actually not the best result for, for this setup. I, I was really expecting to see like a nine, nine seconds, 800 milliseconds, not We've got like 50 more milliseconds than what I want to see. Um, so that's, a little, yeah, that's not ideal, but oh well, it's close enough. Like the thing is the CL40 setup is going to have so much better latency that it's going to beat this score by an entire second or almost an entire second. So I don't know why I care so much about a couple milliseconds on top of this. It's just, it really doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, now we're going to load up the CL40 profile, which is just going to wipe the floor with the CL28 profile. Um, because, again, like, the cast latency timing is there to look pretty. Like, the TRCD timing is actually more important than cast latency is, but the thing is, TRCD, on the vast majority of memory chips, doesn't go very low. And when I say vast majority of memory chips, I mean 
basically everything except Samsung B die on DDR4. Like, I can't even think real. Well, no, there was some wacky DDR3 memory chips that would do really, really low TRCD. Um, but historically speaking, like, the most important of the primary timings in terms of performance is also the only, like, primary timing that really doesn't tend to go very low on the vast majority of memory chips ever produced. Like, loose TRCD is kind of the defined, like, is just the norm for memory. Um, for basically as long as I've been into me overclocking, it's been a case of, like, your cast latency goes lower than your TRCD, and your TRCD is more important for performance. So anyway, now we're going to load up our CL4. Actually, I'm, I'm going to show you that I didn't change any of the of the sub timings, because obviously if I punched in, uh, like if I really wanted to, I could punch in sub timings that would send this uh, setup straight to hell in terms of performance. But as you can see, everything is just straight up on auto. I've not done anything. Um, and so we're gonna load up uh, CL40 with uh, type sub timings. And actually I'm not gonna show you the timings because uh, like, I've, I've, these are timings that I've used across many, many videos. Like, you can just watch any of my other DDR5 overclock videos. You're going to see very similar sub-timings to what I'm using here. Actually, you're going to see better sub-timings what I'm using here, because when you have loose primaries, there's a few of the sub-timings that don't go as low as they would otherwise go. But, yeah. Um, anyway, so here goes a CL40 overclock that's just going to straight up beat a CL28 at the same memory speed because cast latency just doesn't matter. And I get so annoyed when I see comments from people who are like, oh, well, I'm waiting for DDR5 to hit CL28. Well, you shouldn't be waiting for DDR5 to hit CL28 because it'll still not perform very well because the sub timings will still be trash. In fact, they might even be worse. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, the, the only thing the memory, like, primary memory timings are good for are, like, determining what memory chips you are likely to get and making purchasing decisions, like, based on, I want to be able to overclock this memory a lot, or I want to be able to overclock this memory a little. If you get memory, like, th that's why with, like, DDR4, the focus is on getting 3200 CL141414 DDR4, because that is Samsung b die and it has a ton of overclocking headroom. Whereas if you get something that's 3200, 16, 18, 18, it could be Samsung c die which is complete and utter trash. It could also be Samsung d die which is somewhat better than Samsung c die and the latency test is being as cooperative as ever. Um, you can see that the read, write, and copy tests are way... Well, read didn't really change that much, but write and copy are way faster than what they were on the CL28 overclock, and oh look, we've we've already got a sub sub 58 nanosecond result. Um, that didn't take very long. The best result I've seen from this setup right here is actually 55.1 nanoseconds. So we're gonna wait for that. But anyway, like the you know on the CL28 setup, the right test. Oh my god, it just did 54.6. See my point? Primary timings don't freaking matter. If I see one more person complaining about the cast latency on DDR5 being loose, I it's just... I'm gonna make another video about how incredibly freaking wrong they are. Because it's just, it's... Like, you see that? I didn't even expect it to hit 55, under 55 nanoseconds. I was happy that, like, this setup was getting, like, 55 nanoseconds-ish, whereas I've not been able to get a 55 nanosecond result on the CL28. And I've, at this point, I've run the IDA latency test on the CL28 setup, like, more times than I've run it on the CL40 setup. Because the CL40 <laughs> setup produces better results. It just, it, because it's just better. Um... Anyway, now if we run PyPrime, this is just going to get absolutely annihilated. Because um, PyPrime, you know, it, like, is more consistent. And it's also actually, like... Like, the thing is, any memory benchmark is actually just a CPU test with a memory bias. Um, but, um... So, like, it is impossible to make, the like, a perfect memory benchmark. Because the thing with any memory benchmark is, like, that data has to go somewhere. And that somewhere is always going to be the CPU cores. Right? So, at the end of the day, everything is actually just a CPU benchmark with some some level of, like, memory component. But, anyway, so this is a single-core CPU benchmark that just so happens to be extremely memory latency sensitive. Um, and, yeah, this, like, this is basically a second faster at CL40 than at CL28. 
because this CL40 setup has way, way better sub timings, which means the memory latency is actually way lower, even though the cast latency sucks. Because the thing about the cast latency timing is it's only relevant for like a single memory read operation. So if you're doing, if you do one read command, that's when your cast timing gets used. If you do many read commands in a row, it no longer matters. Um, and there's, I, yeah, like if you're chain, chaining a bunch of read operations one after the other, or even reads and writes, and you're just, you know, making a string of them, the cast time, <laughs> the, the, the cast timing just doesn't do anything. Um, and like, even, even Ida doesn't think, like, even Ida agrees, like, CL40 with good sub-timings is better than CL28 with auto sub-timings. Like, they're not even particularly bad, they're just auto, because auto timings are freaking terrible. Um, actually, well, no, like, that's not true. I've seen memory kits that come with XMP timings that are worse than auto. Um, yeah, that exists. And it tends to happen on, like, high-end kits in my experience, which is really stupid. Like, there's some very expensive DDR4 kits out there which have absolutely atrocious XMP profiles that should just never be used because they're bad. They're very bad. Um, like, you turn the XMP profile on and your performance actually just goes down. Um, so, yeah. The problem with RAM performance is not the primary timings. It's the sub-timings. Um, and DDR5 sub-timings on auto are really, like... DDR4 auto sub-timings are pretty bad. DDR5 <laughs> sub-timings on auto are, like, way worse. Let's just put it that way. I've not actually got, gone and, like, done a direct one-to-one -one comparison, but, like, is worse. Is way worse. Uh, which also means when you tighten up your sub-timings on DDR5, it makes more of a difference to the performance than it does on DDR4, and the primary timings are as irrelevant as they've ever been. Um, arguably they were more relevant on DDR3 and 4, slightly, very slight. well, the, the thing is, on DDR4 you have Samsung BDI, and so if you can do, like, TRCD14, right, like, that, that, like, going from TRCD, like, 20 to 14, that's a big deal. Um, but with DDR5, you're going from TRCD, like, 50 to TRCD37, or, like, 36, maybe, um, and your perfor like your performance basically doesn't change because 37 and 40 are pretty much the same number. Or even 36 and 40 are basically the same number. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, hopefully this, this proves a point. The primary timings do not matter. So, yeah, uh, another... Actually, there's like multiple comments that led to this because I remember reading a comment where somebody was complaining that they have like a memory overclock on, I think, a Unify X where the only thing they did was change the primary timings. So, of course, their memory performance was terrible because they changed the primary timings, which don't actually do anything. Thank you for watching my video. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. Leave a... If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up uh, shirts, hoodies, uh, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I also have a band camp. Um, if, like, you would like to check that out, that exists. There's a link there uh, in the description. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.